and good morning people. Welcome back to Skoden 4. We are now knights. We are now equipped. And we are now going to go out on the sea for our first mission. So let's go do that. We have our team, Snow, the main character, Paula and Jewel. Are we ready for our patrol? Yeah, let's go. So we're going to use the ship there. We have two possible jobs. We can go and defeat three random creatures. Basically we fight like, three different fights. Or we can deliver a document to Middleport. Delivering the document is more troublesome. But we will make more money that way. That is exactly what I want. The uh, fights, uh, the free fights, I will be getting on the way to Middleport. So this way, I will get both. So let's deliver a document to Middleport. East of Razrail, and it's real close by. That is actually quite true. But this is our ship, and we can now go forward. Let's look at the chart, shall we? Yeah, this is the world map. However, there's two problems with it. Number one, we are basically in an archipelago. There are lots of little islands dotted around. You can probably see a few underneath the uh, clouds. However, Get into them is tricky. Well, not tricky, it's actually quite easy to get to a place. You can set your direction by pressing the X button, and so you could go anywhere you want. The trickiness comes with how slow you move. I'm going full speed. without any aids. And fights are even more common here and more more randomly placed than uh, fights down that alleyway and on land. Yeah, we're going to be on the sea quite a lot and it's going to be agonizingly boring running between islands. I wish I could uh, say it's going to be an amazing boat trip, but it won't be. Anyways, these are muddy fish. They are not really that dangerous. These are probably the weakest uh, enemies on the sea. About the same uh, danger as a thug. However, they do give a lot more experience, so I've just gained a level on the main character in Snow, which is very nice. Again, this is full speed ahead. I can go make it go faster, which I will show in just a moment if this is nothing new. Oh, no, it is new. These are wild seaweed. These can actually be dangerous. They have an attack which can hit for around about 15, 16, up to 20 damage, which at this moment in time is quite a lot compared to my hit point totals. However, they also give quite a bit of HP uh, experience. I do believe at least. 
but I'm not going to pull any punches for these. It will survive these two hits. That attack isn't too bad. If it hits, it only does the amount of a normal hit. It's its special attack where it fires its leaves at you and deals a lot of damage. But this fight's over. They can come in groups of five, I believe, at the most. And you might notice that Jewel and Paula have exceeded the other two in experience. That's because they were level, uh, the two boys were level five, so they only got uh, a small amount of experience compared to the two girls who were on level four. So the girls got, say, 400, while the boys got 200. And that experience is carried over. It does not get reduced once you've changed levels. So the girls have suddenly got over the boys in their experience. It happens. It, you can't get away from it, unfortunately. But it does even itself out over time. The boys might get experience next time and uh, more experience next time and uh, be ahead of the girls again. But uh, back to the ship. I can make it go forward by pressing the right one button and it doubles the speed of the ship, which is quite helpful. However, it still isn't quick enough to get you anywhere fast. The map is quite huge, the islands are quite spaced out, and you will get into fights pretty commonly. Let's go! Ah, there's this big attack. 15 damage, yeah. It's not a small amount, is it? But this fight should be over now. Okay. 240 potch, very nice. I would like another level before I go back to Vazril. But uh, let's go and deliver this uh, message or parcel or package or whatever it is. One other thing about these islands is if you don't enter at the uh, correct place, which is the port, the island will turn you away. And you will likely, uh, sometimes, be uh, facing the opposite direction of where you're meant to be going. It can be annoying. Everything about travelling on the seas has a problem with it at some point. But uh, the port's just over here. We should be allowed to make landfall. So let's land. The first time you go somewhere, you will not know what it is until you have landed. After that, it will tell you each time that you're making landfall at uh, wherever you've landed, so in this case, Middleport. This is the person we need to speak to about the letter. And we get a thousand potch, which is very nice. There are a few things we can do here. We can talk to this guy. He tells you about random deals for this booth here, which is a trading post. We currently don't have access to very much. Actually, we don't have access to any trading post apart from the one here in uh, Middleport. So, anything I buy here 
is pretty much moot for quite a while. However, I am going to buy a few things. I'm going to... Uh, actually, not just yet. I will be buying a few things, but um, I want to uh, get a bit of money first. You can actually start making money in this town. This old man is an appraiser. Remember those question mark, mark stuff? This is where you change it into items. Master Graffiti. That I didn't expect. Hmm. And we've got pots. Pot of failure. I'm hoping to get a pot of Razriel. There it is. Because that has just paid for every little thing that I am uh, currently uh, appraising here. And that's just given me a nice profit. Remember, I've just cost, uh, uh, spent, uh, what, uh, six, uh, no, 1400, 1400, uh, potch on that. I need that to be made up somehow. Pots of, uh, no, Normally, the question mark stuff that can be sold for 50. 500 pots, very nice. However, once they've appraised, they will change their value. Pots of failure only sell for 5. But, uh, I might as well sell them. Graffiti also sells for 5, but uh, Master Graffiti apparently sells for 250, so I have made a bit of a profit there. Pots of Razreel, though, sell for 750. So, I've just made a little bit of profit there. Not much, but it is enough for the moment. This equipment shop sells cough drops. They were available in the... Uh, in Vazriel as uh, bargain items, but they're now available as normal items in this shop. That's what usually happens. Bargain items are usually one or two shops ahead of items before, so uh, of, of the shops. Oh. Bargain items are usually items from one or two shops ahead than the one you're currently using. So, they are usually more powerful. Scale shield. Uh, yes please. Paula can have that. Uh, anything else? I could buy some more equipment, but... Uh, the scale shield is really all I need right now, because I'm just about to pretty much make a lot of money between this part and the next one. In here is Smithery. The Smithery is where you will go to raise up your weapons. Adrienne, company just an apprentice. If we're fine with that, she'll strengthen our weapons. Fee at this moment in time is 300. So let's uh, raise the main character's sword. Cost 300. And it's now a level 2 sword. Its attack uh, strength went up by 11, so it's now got an attack strength for 23. And you will notice that the fee has gone up to 600 for the next level. Yeah, this is where most of the money goes. Armour, items, rooms, all are quite expensive at the, uh, throughout the game, but getting up, up exp uh, your weapon levels really takes the biscuit. 
you will see later on in the game how high this fee goes. But uh, let's uh, raise everyone's sword once at least. And I will do the second one once I've made my money. I will show you the way, hey I'm going to make money in just a bit. So, I want to go over here next. And I believe to one side is a chest. Which has a fancy console. Um, can be placed in a room, room apparently. Hmm. Doesn't look like I can do, I can do anything with it just yet. But we've got a nice looking mansion. The Lord's Mansion. We don't really need to be here right now. Because no one's here. Yeah. Absolutely no reason to be here. So I guess uh, the uh, inn is the next place. Which is over here, but let's first let's talk to this uh, funny haired lady here. This is Pecola. She is a window master. Yeah, we will be talking to her a bit later. And I want to go to the uh, inn here. On this uh, I think we have Oscar and Deborah. You will notice there's a big pattern with the people I'm talking to. They have pictures. Now, speaking of pictures, there should be among all these, one of these pictures here, a uh, Treasure map. There it is. It's on the barrels, but uh, close enough to a picture. This is the inn. We can uh, stay the night, or we can save. The fee is 120. I am going to be doing that a bit later. I will be abusing her save point quite a lot actually soon. And this is the lottery. But we need a lottery ticket to actually do anything with that. I will show that much more later. Let's save it here. Because the next person I talk to is where I'm going to make most of my money for the moment in time. And that's this person over here. This is Gunter. He is a travelling gambler. Mostly to do with dice. which is, uh, A version of dice which is very famous in the Sokojin universe. Triple Toss is one of the most famous games in this series. He also has Down to One, so we'll do that one first, which I believe is new for this game. I don't think it's appeared in any others. The rules. Basically, the first one person to get number one on the dice wins. So. We will wager the amount of pot, uh, a certain amount of potch. I can go up to uh, 360. 
but I'm going to do 20. Uh, for any number that is zero, uh, is not number one, it will add to the pot. So, let's show. If he doesn't get one in the first go, which he sometimes does, no, he got six. So he had six. Uh, basically, he had uh, six times ten percent of the uh, pool, uh, the initial pool. So in this case, twelve. If the dice goes out of this bowl, it will be considered dead, and you will uh, lose. Just like that. So I just lost 20 potch. So let's uh, do that again. Five, so he's added 10. Six, so I've added 12. And it just keeps going until someone gets number one. This is not the best way to make money, unfortunately. Because the amount can be very low that uh, you make. The real money maker is in triple toss. Rules of this game. You have three dice. On the left you will see the rolls that you can get with the three dice, which will make a uh, either a winner or a loser. He rolls first, unfortunately, so there is the possibility that you will not get a roll. If he rolls two, uh, two numbers uh, as the same, so let's say he rolls a two and a two, the third dice, let's say it's a three, will be his score, so he will get three. I will need to match three or get an instant win to beat him. One, two, three is a lose, instant lose. So if anyone gets that, they will lose twice the amount of potch that was bet. Four, five, six will make uh, and will make you win double. Any triple except for triple one will get, uh, net you. Uh, three times the bet, and triple one will net you five times, so if you get three ones, you win the money. So let's just do a hundred, and let him roll. So he's rolled two fours, so number two is his score. I need to beat two as a score. Which I have. I got two sixes, but they don't. Uh, they they don't count. It's the four that does. So I win 100 potch. Let's see if I can get him to do a uh, get a win. Remember, he rolls first, so it is quite possible that. Uh, he gets a win, and I'd never get a roll. So, at this moment in time, I'm doing quite well. Three, four, five, uh, six. And that's a dead roll. Again, same. If a dice doesn't fall into the bowl, it's a dead roll, and that's an instant lose. So, yeah, I'm doing quite well here. Now, that's not something he usually does. He doesn't usually uh, fail this much. However, I have noticed that the more pops that is in the uh, pool, the more chance he wins. He, his skill seems to suddenly get better if he has more money to gain. And there's an instant win. First roll, I don't get to you know, go, and I lose three times the amount.
That is the danger, and I've just pretty much lost everything I gained in the last few fights. Uh, well, dice battles, well, dice rolls. So, what I'm going to be doing is betting all my potch. Uh, if I win, I keep it and save. If I lose, I reload and make a, um, and keep going until I win. I will probably be back with about 30,000 potch. Yeah, I might be cheating, but this is probably the best and the worst way to make money. You can make a lot of money very quickly. The maximum amount you can bet is 3,000. So if you get a couple of good winners, uh, you can make the money in qu pretty quickly. I believe the, the amount of money you can bet goes up as the game progresses as well, up to around 30,000 maybe more but uh, this is the worst because again like this if luck's against you and he just keeps throwing winners it can take a very long time to actually make the money so that's what I'm going to be doing between the ne this part and the next one We do have one more little alleyway to go down and see if uh, anything's here. I don't believe anything is apart from this one chest. Which is a mushroom, which is actually quite nice. Uh, one MP for uh, every level. And this is an empty house. There's actually nothing in here right now at all. Yeah. So next time I will be back with money. I will have everything bought. I will. Uh, I will pretty much done by shopping for the next four hours of gameplay. And, uh, yeah, I'll be ready for whatever the game throws at me after that. Which is uh, quite a lot, actually. So, next time. It's more Sakodan 4. Until then, have a wonderful day. Have lots of fun. Goodbye.